the way to quantify acidity is to look at how much H3O plus is produced in water. Right? And that's because if I have an acid, any acid, any generic acid, if I react it with water or dissolve it in water, put it in water, if it is an acid, it will donate an H plus to the water and the water will become H3O plus. As we said, if it's a strong acid, this will do that effectively 100%. There won't be any HA left. It'll all be converted into products. If it's a weak acid, many of the molecules will remain because even though the products are formed, the products will come back together and reform some reactants. So I'll, when equilibrium is reached, I'll still have some reactants left over. But if I want to quantify that, how strong is it? How weak is it? One way to do that is to look at how much H3O plus is produced, right? Because if it's really strong, it'll produce more H3O plus. If it's relatively weak, it'll only produce a little bit. So if I measure the amount of H3O plus in molarity, which is often abbreviated by putting brackets around something, which means moles of H3O plus per liter of solution, if I can measure that in molarity, that will give me a sense for how strong of an acid this is. And pH is directly related to that. So pH is equal to the negative log function of the molarity or H3O plus concentration. So the P of pH just refers to taking the negative log of something in your calculator. That's all the P means. The H refers to the extra H plus on the water of the H3O plus. So pH is the negative log of the H plus concentration. And so if I have a higher H plus concentration, and when I take the negative log of that, I'm going to get a lower pH. So I can also rearrange that formula and express it like that. So I can use these formulas to calculate pH. If I know how much H3O plus there is, use the negative log, I've got the pH. If I am in the lab and I measure with a pH probe, what's the pH of this solution? I can plug that in here and take 10 to the power of that negative pH power, and that will tell me how much H3O plus there is. And that will help me understand whether, uh, to what uh, strength or how strong my base is to an extent. So what did we say? In pure water, in pure water at room temperature, we said those two water molecules can collide with one another and if they collide with enough force, one will act as a base, we saw that in the simulation, to pick up an H plus and the other will act as an acid to donate an H plus. And we said the concentration of this that's produced is 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So if I take the log of that, which will be uh, negative 7, and then I make it negative, that will give me positive 7. That's why water is a pH of 7. Because the H3O plus solution, or concentration in water, is 1 times 10 to the negative 7th molar. So I might ask you to use those formulas or do some basic calculations with them. Um, uh, converting between pH and H3O plus concentration and then conceptually to recognize if you have a certain H3O plus concentration what that tells you about how strong the acid is. If this is a low H3O plus concentration, it's a small number, tiny fraction. So that means water is not a very strong acid. It doesn't produce much H3O plus in solution. So here's the pH scale. You're probably familiar with this. Just so you know, the pH scale does go below 1 and it does go above 14. For practical purposes, most situations, it'll be between 1 and 14, but it can go down to 0 and it actually can be slightly negative depending on the concentration of H3O+. It can be, if you have a really high concentration of H3O+, you could end up with a, a slightly negative pH. So you want to be aware of that as a possibility. But <coughs> You know, if you have a concentration of H3O+, plus, you just take the negative log of that and that will give you the pH uh, on the pH scale. So then the last thing we want to talk about today are making lab measurements that allow you to measure quantities of acids and bases.
And so one way to do that is to perform a titration. So in a titration, what you'd start with, maybe you'd start with an acid. So you could flip-flop this and start with a base. But if you start with an acid that can donate an H+, plus, the question here then is, maybe you're, you're working for a chemical company, maybe you develop a new drug, and you have created a certain uh, uh, pill form that that drug is in, and you are, uh, you want to make sure that the pills are the right dosage, right? Maybe you're working in quality control. Your company is producing this medicine, and it has to be the right dosage. So a common test that you would do is a titration. So you would take the pill, you would dissolve the pill into water. If the pill is an acid or a base, you can do a titration to figure out if the pill has the right dosage the pill is meant to have so many milligrams of this drug, you can determine how many milligrams are in that pill by doing a titration. So the way that works is, if the, if the chemical that's in this pill is an acid, and it has an H+, plus, it could donate, and the pill has so many molecules of this present, if I put that in water, um, that acid will dissolve in water. So I'll have the acid present in water. I'm going to complicate it. So we've got that acid dissolved in water. Some of the acid is going to be donating H, donating H plus to water, right? So some of that acid will be converted into H3O plus. And it'll get the conjugate base of the acid. That'll be the acid molecule without the H plus. So the idea here is, how do I figure out how much of this I started with to confirm that I have the right number of molecules in my pill. Well, I would titrate that acid with a base. So the word titrate means you're going to be adding a reactant to another reactant and monitoring when the reaction is done. So I'm going to add a base. So during my titration, maybe I add NaOH, standard base. It's got a negative charge. The OH minus will be attracted to this hydrogen on any unreacted acid that's present, as well as the hydrogen of an H3O plus. So it will kind of sponge up every extra H plus in solution. And if I can tell, if I can tell experimentally how much moles of NaOH was required to react all the acid, then I know that tells me how much acid there was. Right, so if I, if I, I would have in this long tube called, called a urine, I would have my base in here, I would start by dissolving my pill, I would open up this and allow the base to come in, I would monitor the reaction. When the reaction is done, meaning when I've added enough moles of base to react with all the moles of acid, I need an indicator. I need something to tell me when the reaction is done. So when the reaction is uh, early on, I've got this acid. The pH should be low. I have a low pH. As I'm adding the base, as long as there's still extra acid that the base hasn't yet reacted with, it should still be a low pH. The pH will slowly go up. But then there will be a moment in time where I add just one drop of this base, and that's enough to consume all the rest of the acid. And I'll probably have a little bit of extra base in that drop as well. And then that will cause the pH to go way up. Because I won't have any acid left, I'll have a little bit of extra base. So that will be a much higher pH. So if I could tell when that jump in pH occurs, that will tell me when I've added enough base to react all the acid that's present. And so if it took five moles of base to do that, I know I have five moles of acid. That tells me the quantity of acid that is in that pill, and I've confirmed the dosage that was present. So it's a volumetric technique, which means that I'm adding a specific volume. I measure what volume of base I'm using. That tells me how many moles of base I've added to the reaction to react all the acid. And the equivalence point is the point where it's totally neutralized. 
so that's the point where the moles of base added are equal to the original moles of acid present. That's the key. That's a relationship that when I do calculations related to my titration, I will use that relationship. We're just trying to give you a little bit of an introduction here, conceptual. The mathematics involved in titrations is something you go through in gruesome detail in general chemistry too. So we're not going to get into the, the calculations too much here. But the idea here is, if I want to know how many moles of acid I started with, I do a titration, get to the point where it's neutralized, which is the equivalence point, and if I can determine how many moles of base it took to get to that point, that tells me how many moles of acid I started with. That's the equivalence point. Often I would use an indicator to show that. So in the beginning, the indicator used here is phenolphthalein. It's colorless when the pH is less than 7. So if I'm starting with an acid and the pH is low, it's colorless. I notice that when I start to add my base and it drips in here, before I swirl it around and it mixes in, there are areas right where the base hit. Those areas have a pH of greater than 7 because it's basic, and so it turns pink. But if I swirl it around and the pink disappears, that means I still have acid present. So I keep adding more base. I'm not at the equivalence point yet. Eventually I reach a point where I have a pink, if I'm using phenolphthalein as my indicator, that means I have a pink that stays. It doesn't disappear when I swirl it around. That means that my pH is now greater than 7 effectively. So now I've added just enough base to react all that acid. I'm at the equivalence point. Technically I'm at what's called the end point, but most of the time if I do my technique right, the end point is basically the same as the equivalence point. That's the point where the indicator says the reaction has undergone a big change in pH. That means I've added enough base to titrate all my acid or to neutralize all my acid and that the moles of base added are equal and uh, uh, enough base to accept all the moles of H plus that are available. So that tells me how much acid I started with by adding a certain amount of base to neutralize all that acid. 